Hello friends and welcome to today's lecture. Today we will be quickly discussing about IAM policy structure. We have been talking a lot about IAM policies, IAM policy types, but today is where we are going to take a deep dive under what a policy is and what the structure looks like. So we understood you know, uh, that uh, usually policy is a JSON document, JavaScript object notation. So I've tried to capture a simple policy document for you. So this is how the policy document looks like and there are various fields into these documents so don't get overwhelmed if this looks confusing to you or complicated we'll uh, you know analyze it step by step so the different fields are version so which is nothing but a policy language version so you can see the first field is version and that is 2012 october 17th so that's the latest version that we have from amazon and it's a very stable version if there are any minor updates you'll get to know from amazon so no need to worry but this is the first uh, field that you need to have in your policy statement so it's container for policy element you can have multiples so you can see we have statement and we have a square bracket over here which is start of square bracket and the end of square bracket is this and inside it we have different statements so you can have multiple such statements where actually you define the actions of what you are doing whether you are allowing or denying any resource sid which is statement ID identifier it's an optional field but it's a way of labeling your statements so instead of going into you know what you are doing uh, or how you are playing with the different fields it's good to have a simple sid which would help us know what is happening inside this for example here the sid that we have set is deny barclay s3 access so barclay is a user and we are denying s3 access to this user so without going into the nitty gritty of inside of what is happening into those statements I can simply with the SID, I can understand what is happening inside it and I can ensure, you know, whether to use these statements or not. You can also, uh, in fact, reuse uh, these policies for other uh, for other groups or other, you know, purposes. For example, here we are, uh, in fact, denying to a specific user. But let's say if we are denying some resources for a specific group and you can use those policies for different roles so let's say you want to create a role a where you want to deny some policies for a particular group so you can attach that policy something of this kind where we are denying s3 bucket for barclay in the same way if you are creating another role and we are again in that another role role b you want to deny uh, you know s3 bucket or maybe some other services like creation of EC2 instance. So you can just change those resources, I mean, create a similar policy, change the resource names and use similar set of policies again, or you can attach the same policy again. So what would happen is it would have different roles, but in all different roles, the S3 bucket creation or EC2 creation would be denied for that particular user or for that particular group. So this is how it helps, I mean, the SID. So effect set whether the policy will allow or deny so you can see the effect so here we are mentioning whether this whatever statements we have we would be writing below uh, basically those are allowing or denying so actually those are denying the permissions principle uh, account user role or federated user to which you would like to allow or deny access access so in the principle you are basically writing whether you want to allow uh, or deny access to a user to group or I mean, to what resource? So here you can see we are uh, denying the access to IAM user for this account and the username is Barclay. So this is where, uh, this is a user to which the policy would get applied to. This user won't be able to uh, do any action on S3. So S3 colon star. So this will, uh, user won't be able to take any action on S3 and that action is tonight. So action, list of actions that the policy allows or denies. So here the action statement. So here we are denying all the actions related to S3. So this user simply doesn't have any actions or any access to S3, you can say. So all the access related to S3 is denied to this users. Resource, the resource to which operator applies. So, so resource, like I said, here uh, is in the resource you can see. So this action <coughs> is applied only for a resource that's S3 but to specific bucket named as my hyphen bucket. So user might be able to access other buckets, but when it comes to my hyphen bucket, which is S3 bucket, the, this user won't be able to uh, do any action 
related to S3 specific with my hyphen bucket. So user might be able to access other S3 bucket, but not my hyphen bucket. Okay, all actions related to my iPhone bucket, S3 bucket, all actions are denied. Then we have, lastly, we have condition, which is again optional. But so these are the circumstances under which the policy grants permission. So you can see two sets of statement. This is the first set of statement. This is second set of statement. The first set of statement, we are writing deny. But the second statement, we are writing allow. So this statements would deny except for the cases which we are writing here. So only in certain cases, we will allow these things. So what are those statements? So you can say allow and the action, I am create service link role, this is allowed, subject to condition, if the string looks like I am service name, colon. So if the service that's accessing this S3 bucket is rds.amazon.com or rds.application hyphen autoscaling.amazon aws.com so if if the string looks like that that is accessing this bucket is you know any of those like i am rds or rds application then that user i mean uh, that uh, application can access this my hyphen s3 bucket so these are the conditions under which you know we are allowing the access to my uh, hyphen s3 bucket otherwise it would be denied so that that's all uh, you, can, you can say we have in under these statements and hope uh, this lecture gives you a clear clarity of how the policy document looks like and the way it works so hope you enjoyed this i would wait to see you, your views in the comment section see you in the next session goodbye